From Anshe Sfar, Bethel MF Congregation, it's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of benching for dummies, otherwise known as everything you ever wanted to know about benching, but were afraid to ask. Benching is a, is a Yiddish word meaning blessing, blessing God for the food, also known as birkat mazon, the blessing over the food, or the grace after meals. Some people call it the birkat, but that makes no sense because it's birkat hamazon, the blessing of. Birkat means the blessing of. So it would be silly to say the blessing of. We say the blessing of something. Birkat hamazon, the blessing over food. Sometimes you may see that, let's say on Shabbat or a special holiday, it may begin with shir hamalot, uh, the song of, of a sense, a song of, of return to the land of Israel. Uh, why do we have this psalm? Because, number one, you have a meal, you want to have some divrei Torah. Three people, two people, a person sitting and eating, but with no words of Torah, it's like, it's like dead, dead meat. It's, a, it's, it's not proper. So we have some kind of Torah. We have a psalm. Secondly, uh, even when we're rejoicing and eating, we should remember Jerusalem. So we, we say we, we look forward to the re return. There is a custom uh, observed by even fewer that during the week, if it's not a holiday, then we say a different psalm, Al Naharot Bavel. We remember the lamentations as we sat at the, at the waters of Babylonia and we wept over Zion. We said, uh, if I do not forget Jerusalem, how can I not uh, my, let my arm be forgot if I don't put Jerusalem above my chiefest joy? The famous verses about remembering Jerusalem, that some people also say that prior to the benching itself. Then you'll see sometimes that there is ma'im achronim. Sometimes people will have uh, some water, a little bit of water, wash their, their hands, they wash from their knuckles down. Some people actually get up and wash their hands, like just pour water over each hand one, one time. And the idea there is, uh, is a twofold. It's one idea that maybe we should sanctify ourselves before the meal, as we do when we wash at the beginning of the meal. And we should sanctify ourselves at the end of the meal because we, the Torah speaks about being holy and being holy. So we want to be holy twice, beginning and the end of meal. We want to surround ourselves with holiness. Another idea is more practical. They used to have a very dangerous uh, salt from the, from the Dead Sea. So we know that it can be very deleterious to your eyes. So we we're afraid that if you didn't wash your fingers, you might touch your eyes, which is always a bad idea, and maybe they would damage the eyes. So as such, they felt it was necessary to wash your hands. That's why some people don't do it. We say, we don't really have that kind of salt, don't need to be concerned. Other people say, well, it's still a good way of having holiness around your meal. So some people uh, continue to do it. Maybe you do it when, when you have a zimun, when you have three people, or 10 people, you have a minion. They try to do it sometimes. Then uh, if there are three men, or if there are three women over the bat mitzvah age, then you can have a zimun, an introduction, a, an invitation. Uh, Lezamein means to invite. Uh, that one person invites the other two, minimally two, it could be a hundred, uh, to, uh, to, to, to bless God. If you have ten, you mention bless God, you mention God by name, Elokeinu. Everyone gets up a little bit to stand up when they say Elokeinu, when they mention God's name. But you want to thank the one whose food you ate. And only people who, who ate uh, can respond. If you, if you didn't eat, a little known fact, you say, If you didn't eat bread, you can't say, let's thank God who, whose food we ate, we didn't eat anything. So you just say, Let uh, his name be blessed uh, forever. In any event, usually you have one person leading. Uh, if it's a Kohen or a Levi, you might want to ask him first. Uh, a rabbi, might want, a scholar, you might want to ask that person first. Uh, the, the head of the household usually gives out that honor. And that person then asks everyone else to bless God, and everyone responds. The, the, the venture that's put out by the Rothman family, the NTSY venture, it's very helpful. There are other ventures as well that have the actual transliteration of each of these sections uh, so that it's, it's very easy even for non-Hebrew readers. So sometimes if you have three men or even three women, you will do this. Now, as far as three women, uh, the Talmud says that it's Rishut, I'm not Rishut, they can have a Zimun. Uh, many women don't feel comfortable with it or don't do it, but it is certainly uh, an option. If you have three women eating by themselves, they can certainly do so. If men are in attendance, Rabbi Henkin thought that men could stay there. Some people feel that 
that the men should excuse themselves as the women make their own zimun. Now, then we have the blessings of the actual Birkat Amazon itself, the, uh, the benching itself. So it consists of three primary blessings. The blessing over the food, we say Moses instituted it. It's, it's very generic, it doesn't, ha- doesn't have to be for food in Israel. It's nothing to do with Israel, just thanking God, or Hazan and Akol, God provides for all. The second blessing is more particularistic. We're thanking God for the land of Israel, which long ago and today in the land of Israel is the source of the food, is the source of the bread. But today we don't, have, we, we don't, we in America don't live in Israel. We're not eating food from Israel. But nonetheless, we always thank God for the land because that's the original verse was to thank God for the land. We also thank Him for the food in that blessing as well. And while we're at it, we, uh, the rabbis added some additional themes, Brit Torah, Chayim Mazon, that we should also thank God for the bris, uh, for, for the bris mila, the, the circumcision, the covenant with God, uh, the, for life, for mazon, for food, and not just food in the land of Israel. Uh, some suggest that because of that, women have a different status in, in the benching because they don't, can't thank God for the, the bris in that kind of way. Then the, for the third blessing is to for prayer for Jerusalem, a prayer for the kingdom of David, uh, that, that the, uh, the Jerusalem should be restored for thanking God for the land of Israel. We need to also mention the idea that perhaps Jerusalem needs to be restored. There needs to be restoration of the land of Israel. The second blessing just focuses on thanking God for giving us the land. The third, on what's missing, that God should have mercy and rebuild Jerusalem. Sometimes it could be a holiday. You may insert something for Purim Muchanika in the second blessing. Or you may insert something for a holiday, Rosh Chodesh, Yom Tov, uh, Shabbat, in the third blessing. That really concludes the Torah part of the blessings. The fourth blessing was instituted by the rabbis. And as you'll notice, it's a separate blessing. It stars Baruch HaTah Hashem. And the idea is Hatov HaMetiv, that God is good and He makes good things for others. And the rabbis say it was instituted in the days of, of Betar, that, that after, after the fall of the Temple, then there was one more uprising by Bar Kokhba, and, 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 and that too failed. And that was the end of any attempt for 2,000 years to try to reestablish the Jewish kingdom. And, uh, and, and it, was, it was so tragic, and yet there was something to be thankful for. The rabbis say, well, at least, uh, at least the bodies didn't, didn't, uh, didn't putrefy. At least the bodies didn't smell. At least in, the, in those days when the Romans wouldn't allow us to bury the bodies, at least they, they, they were able to lay out their indignity. And then they allowed us to bury them. What a wonderful thing. Now, it's a strange thing to thank God for when you're eating. But the idea is that no matter what we have, even if the meal was not what we wanted, we can always thank God. And we can certainly thank God if it was a beautiful meal. A tov v'hamitiv. A strange, interesting uh, story. Now then, there are additions. Uh, most people do recite them. Some say, no, look, the benching is over, it's over. But most people recite various harachamans, some Sephardic Jews and Ashkenazic Jews, and everyone likes to throw in different types of harachamans, of, of different uh, prayers and blessings, some verses. We, we bless God, we pray, pray for redemption for Elijah the prophet, we bless the Baal Habayit, that has a Talmudic source that you should always give a blessing to the, to the ha- head of the household, the new NCSY bencher and many new benchers have the Talmudic blessing to, to bless the head of the household, their family, you can bless whoever's at the table, you can bless your own family, wherever they may be, and you end on the theme of peace, of se shalom yomav, v'rechem the b'shalom, the Hashem v'rechem shalom you want to end on peace, most of our prayers end on peace. Now, sometimes that's not the end. Then there's a blessing over the a cup of wine. Some, the Talmud debates whether we always need to say a, a grace after meals at, on a cup of wine. Most of us do not on a general basis, but when there's a minion, synagogue, something like that, a festive affair, certainly for the Shevardachos, for a wedding, you make the blessing, the, the benching over a cup of wine, again, holding it like Kiddush, holding it the whole time for the four blessings. And you can put it down and then you make Boi Pri at the end and, uh, and, and drink that wine. Now, benching is not the only kind of benching. There are other kinds of benching. There's, if you don't, didn't have bread, then you wouldn't do benching. You would say a, a small blessing. Now, if you had a snack that was related to the five grains, uh, the barley, r- rye, oat, wheat, and spelt, uh, then, uh, so some kind of cookie, cake, uh, cracker, then you would say al uh, a longer 
an abridged version of these four blessings. And uh, it's found also in the back of most benchers, the most birhonim, most, most uh, books that have the benching in them. In them. Also, if you had from the seven species, not only the two, two gra- the grains that we mentioned, the barley and the, and, the, and the wheat, but also if you had uh, dates, pomegranates, olives, figs, uh, and, and, and the like, um, the figs, dates, olives, pomegranates, uh, uh, the grapes, the, these things, wine, you would also say that special abridged version. Now, if you had something that was not, not, not grain-oriented, it was not one of the seven species, just an apple, an orange, a glass of, a glass of water, a glass of milk, uh, the, uh, for meat, then you say a very brief blessing, thanking God for the chayol, I mean, the one who provides life for all living. So that's, that's benching. Those are everything you need to know about benching in a jiffy. That's, that's the idea of benching, the Birkat HaMazon. Learn more, open the Siddur, ask your rabbis and friends, and uh, benching can be a beautiful, beautiful ritualized part of one's life that, to, to think about our thankfulness for, for every meal that we have and uh, to, to, to always remember the land of Israel, to always pray for it, no matter what's happening, and to always be thankful, no matter what's, what the circumstance. It's always something to be thankful for. Thank you for joining us here at the Anche Sfar Bethel Emmeth Congregation for our discussion, the benching. Join us each week for the Parsha, holidays, how-to videos, and being Jewish for dummies too. Jo- uh, join us, enjoy, learn more. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asby.org.